So during this session, uh, do not forget to uh, to go to the chat if you have any question uh, during the lecture or during the comments. And Dr. Ivan Ilik will uh, come back to you through the chat to answer to this uh, question. Uh, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon if you are in another country. <clears throat> we are at the uh, ABC um, this year, hybrid, partially virtual, partially physical. And we had a wonderful session on uh, CTA and bifurcation. It's clear that uh, already today, but in the decade, uh, many times we will go to the CAT lab having already performed uh, a multi-slide CT scan. And obviously, uh, there is the possibility of uh, planning, planning what you are going to do <clears throat> the next day. So uh, we have uh, three or four speakers uh, today, and um, they are going to discuss if we can basically uh, not only predict complication, bifurcation, but what kind of vessel we have to do. We don't have to uh, rush and jump on every bifurcation because some of them does not deserve to be uh, treated. So it's a very exciting session, and I'm there with uh, one of the pioneers in the field, Thierry Lefebvre, which has been uh, uh, with Yves Louvard, uh, driving this ABC club for so many years, and it has been such a, a success and so much scientific session uh, beyond the practical things of uh, how to perform uh, a bifurcation. Okay, so the first uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Shaw, is that correct? Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at EBC 2021 meeting. The title of my presentation is CT Bifurcation Score as a Novel Tool for Predicting Intraprocedural Side Branch Occlusion, which is actually the first presentation of two sets of presentations. I have nothing to disclose. There may be two major issues in bifurcation PCI. The first is is it worth to treat side branch? Second topic is how to predict and treat gel side branch before PCI, not during or after ballooning. In this first presentation, I'd like to introduce CT Bapkins score, which was made to predict loss or gelling of side branch before PCI from coronary CT image. CT bifurcation score was derived from a small single center registry using 260 bifurcations. There was no significant differences in clinical characteristics between 40 patients with sediment occlusion and 206 patients without occlusion, except higher elevation of post procedural CTMB in side branch occlusion group. In poor bifurcation vessel analysis, Regarding angiographic characteristics, the reference diameter and minimal luminal diameter of both main and side branch were smaller in occlusion group compared to non-occlusion group, but there was no difference in the bifurcation angle between two groups. Therefore, the main branch size stent diameter was slightly larger in side branch occlusion group compared to non-occlusion group. The plug characteristics analysis is quite complex. In brief, Applications with some complex plugs such as calcified or low tension plug in main or side branch, or by patients with smaller side branch compared to main branch, tended to lose side branch after main branch ballooning or stenting. We did lots of regression and found four parameters that can predict robustly side branch occlusion during PCI. We developed CT bifurcation score, which calculates the risk of sediment occlusion based on the presence of calcified plug, low tension plug, the length of side branch plug, and the ratio of main vessel to side branch vessel area. The sum of these four points are the CT bifurcation score. A case of interprocedural side branch occlusion. In this arrayed diagonal bifurcation region, there is a large amount of low density plug and calcification spot in LAD. After sending of LAD, 
although the diagonal branch was protected by a wire, the diagonal branch suddenly disappeared. In another case, there was a large amount of rotation block and several cash pressure spots in LAD and diagonal branch. Although the diagonal branch was protected by a wire, after the extending of LAD, we lost diagonal branch. The performance of CT Barbican score for predicting side band occlusion was much higher. C statics of 0.75 compared to angiographically derived scores, medial clitation, or reserve score. Take home messages from this CT Barbican score is shown here. Side branch jailing can be predicted by assessing the CT Barbican score, which is based on the Characteristics or size of plug, including classified plug in main vessel, low tension in main vessel or side branch, side branch plug length of more than 5 mm, or smaller side branch compared to main branch, defined by area ratio of more than 4.3 or diameter ratio of more than 2.1. Thank you for your attention. Okay, so that the, I think it's interesting that the Choi and his uh, colleagues presented the you know CT bifurcation score using the, the lasso technique, and he defined that the calcified plaque, low attenuation side branch plaque, and main branch side branch area. So that the Dr. Choi, how how do you think about so that the, we can use this in daily practice? So that the you you score the CT bifurcation score using classified plaque, low attenuation, side branch lesion length, and the ratio between area between main and side branch. So that the do you think it's feasible in daily practice? For example, you know definition of classified plaque and definition of low attenuation can be different in applying to uh, different patients. So can you please be more specific about those two? I welcome your comments, Dr. Ku. It's, it's like angiographical inter interpretation of the side, side branch or plug. If the plug looks very ugly or very irregular, even by the invasive angiography, it usually results in peripheral impaction or some complication. It's, it's, it's very similar. The, the same principle can be applied in crisis. If the, the plug emitted by crisis looks ugly, Frequency mixture of classified and mixed plug or with sometimes, sometimes very low dense plug, which suggests some um, repeat core, it might result in some peripheral thrombosis or some incomplete center position or some, some um, unexpected result. This is my basic principle, but still, the limitation is that there's no, still no well widely accepted well-defined definition about the ugly plug or some risk plug from Korean city. I think uh, it, uh, these data are very interesting. Uh, at the same time, uh, we, we, we are missing the technical considerations. So for example, the sizing of the stent according to uh, the three uh, diameter low, which have a big impact on the, the risk of uh, occlusion. So I think it's, uh, it could be very interesting to look at that uh, as a complement to the predictors uh, of uh, uh, occlusion of the side branch uh, with MSCT. Uh, so it will, uh, I think, uh, reinforce that you will, should really respect the fractal law in order to avoid pushing the carina and closing the side branch. So Pat Patrick, uh, what is your opinion? So I like very much that, that kind of work. I mean, to predict what is going to go in the lab is really our daily life. And, and the fact that you can do that on multi-slide CT scan is really the future. It's, a, it's called planning. We need planning. Now, my experience with the score is uh, <clears throat> in the first place, you have to try to be quantitative so that it's objective, reproducible, the machine do for you, and it's not visual and subjective. So reproducibility and quantitative is very important. Uh, of course, we are still in the phase where we are deriving the score from a series, a personal series, yeah? The next step is, of course, to make a, what we call an external validation. So you apply to another population and see if you find the same percentage of uh, uh, occlusion. For instance, uh, 
uh, Gorky has, uh, I think, 18% in his worst uh, quartile. That's one patient on five. So it's very important to uh, detect this patient because one on five, you really have to uh, adapt your, uh, your technology. So I, I think it's, uh, that's the message, quantitative reproducibility, derivation, and uh, external validation, and then it will be embraced by the, by the community, yeah? Thank you okay, very, very much, nice. So maybe we should move to the next uh, lecture uh, by Dr. Gredeki, uh, which is a visually estimated result score based on CTCA, CTA uh, to predict cyber branch occlusion. Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at EBC 2021 meeting. The title of my presentation is Visually Estimated Resolve Score Based on Computed Tomography to Predict Side Branch Occlusion in Percutaneous Bifurcation Intervention. Bifurcation lesions account for 15 to 20 percent of all percutaneous coronary interventions, and side branch occlusion remains a major procedural complication. To predict the probability of side branch occlusion after main vessel stenting, Resolve score was designed for evaluation of invasive coronary angiograms. Notably, this simple tool showed good results with both quantitative measurements as well as visual estimation. Originally, score consists of six different variables and five out of, out of those six with only exception of TIMI flow grade can be derived from preprocedural computed tomography and geography, a modality that is currently emerging as uh, attractive method for non-invasive assessment of coronary arteries before attempted PCI. Our group showed previously that quantitative CTA resolve score performs as good as gold standard being a geographic visual resolve score. Mm, whereas the quantitative coronary analysis provides an objective determination of severity and extent of coronary artery disease, it might be time consuming and thus less frequently used in real life clinical practice. To simplify and expand the application of non invasive CTA for predicting side branch occlusion, we employ the visual estimation of each constituent element of the original quantitative CTA resolve score. Test ground for our study was a sample of 400 bifurcation lesions in 363 patients, in whom a total of 28 side branch occlusions were noted. The overall diagnostic capability of CTA derived resolve score was significantly higher as compared with its quantitative counterpart. The results of the reclassification analysis revealed that the CTA-derived visual resolve score corrected, correctly predicted more lesions with side branch occlusion into the highest risk category as compared with the quantitative CTA resolve score, thereby suggesting improved discrimination among lesions at greater risk of side branch compromise. We believe that this observation might rely on numerically, numerically higher area under the curve of CTA-derived visual resolve score for three out of four different constituent elements of the scores. Moreover, our data confirmed ability of, uh, of CTA-derived visual resolve score to stratify lesions into high-risk group and non-high-risk group of side branch occlusion, specifically by using the cutoff value of 17 point, which was defined as the lowest score in quartile four for discrimination between high risk group and non high risk group. The incidence of side branch occlusion was significantly higher in the high risk group, and that being nearly 19% than in the non high risk group, that being cumulatively 3.8%. Also, the discriminatory performance of CTA-derived visual score, uh, resolve score was equal to the quantitative CTA-derived resolve score as confirmed by comparable rates of side branch occlusion within high-risk groups 
Interestingly and consistently with prior angiographic studies, the lowest score in quartile four uh, for CTA derived visual score being 17 points was higher than that of its quantitative counterpart being 12 points that emphasizes, emphasizes the overestimation of visual assessment when compared with quantitative CTA analysis. This aspect is underscored by the agreement between visual and quantitative CT analysis. While it was excellent for bifurcation angle and moderate for diameter stenosis of side branch, it was only fair for diameter ratio between main vessel and side branch and poor for diameter stenosis of bifurcation core. Noteworthy the agreement between the constituent elements of CTA derived scores was comparable to prior comparison of visual estimated versus quantitative and geography based resolve score where kappa ranged between 0.2 up to 0.4 thereby suggesting certain level of variability intrinsic to each imaging modality interestingly we noted numerically higher values of all visual constituent elements of the scores as compared with their quantitative counterparts along with reclassification of the quantitative CTA derived resolve score into higher categories based on visual assessment. As such, the proposed CTA derived visual resolve score might be particularly useful in identification uh, of larger number of lesions at increased risk of side branch occlusion after initial main vessel stenting and might be used to determine optimal preemptive measure so depending on the importance of the side branch this could include for example protection of the side branch with the body wire it can include application of two stent techniques uh, of the procedure or even uh, deferring pci and referring specific patients into the surgery. Nonetheless, further studies are warranted to find specific CTA predictors of side branch occlusion. Thank you for your attention. I can start with uh, uh, angle B as a predictor of side branch occlusion. So we, we learned in the past that uh, uh, angle A, which is the approach toward the side branch, and angle B, which is a uh, uh, the angle between the, the main branch and the side branch, distant mm -hmm. to the carina. And uh, we learned that uh, the uh, larger angle B was associated with lower risk of occlusion of the side branch. And in your study, you find exactly the opposite. So uh, can, can, how we can explain that? Mm, I think... Uh... It, it's true that we, we have found that the, the bifurcation angle is not so important for a side branch occlusion as other uh, variables from a resolve score are. And uh, the most, most important uh, were the uh, diameter of stenosis in the bifurcation core and also the diameter of stenosis within the side branch. So it just suggests that the mechanism of a side branch occlusion is... Uh, more uh, focused on a plaque shift than it would be on a change in a geometry of the vessel after the, the stenting uh, of the main vessel. Dr. Hu, so, yeah. any comment about that? Yeah. Yes, so that the, it's interesting to see the differences between two you know, scoring system from Dr. Choi and Dr. You know, Grodecki. So that the Dr. Choi is that the, there is no influence of, uh, of angulation and Dr. Grodecki did not uh, integrate the plaque characters such as calcification and low, low attenuation. So in that, uh, in that perspective, so Grodecki, how you can improve this index? For example, combining Dr. Choi's and your score may provide a better information and better predictability. So can you please some, give some comments about that? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great idea to combine the plaque characteristic into the risk score of side branch occlusion. And this is uh, one of the things that we were able to show in our follow-up uh, study that the um, plaque characterization allows to, to improve the predictability of, 
plug within the, the side branch and that the most important for uh, endpoint to occur was uh, the soft non-calcified plug. So it somehow stands uh, with the line what was found uh, in the uh, previous presentation that the low attenuation plug uh, is an important factor uh, for, uh, for this complication. Uh, I can make a short comment. I mean, I, I think that uh, I was a little bit puzzled that uh, the only parameters which has uh, a good kappa value is the angle, yeah, between the uh, visual and versus the quantitative. The other is extremely low. So uh, I don't know what to believe. Do you have to believe the quantitative of the visual because you will have a, a major uh, impact on the score? What I like very much is that finally you end up in the, the last quartile with percentage which are 18.6 and 13.6, whatever you do visual of quantitative. And that's important because 18.6 is one on five. Really, when you go in the lab, you have to be mentally prepared about what is going to happen because uh, the worst that can happen is, of course, the uh, slow no reflow the no reflow because you have mobilized a, a low attenuation uh, a plaque. That, that seems to me one of the worst acute problem. Yeah, you have to be prepared that you have to get your nitroprusite and all the things to take care of the uh, slow flow. One thing which is missing with the multi-slide CT scan is the dynamic. Of course, we are analyzing the end diastolic phase, phase but you know there is a motion of systolic and diastolic and if you remember uh, with Chris Girazis we look at that at the motion systolic and diastolic in the in the syntax score for the main stem and it seems that to respect some motion of systolic and diastolic is very important and that's maybe an extra argument for uh, for a single stand sometimes is to respect that uh, motion, apparently mother nature needed. And uh, I, I just uh, will present that at the ABC, but in the 10 years follow-up, uh, it's very interesting, the two stand technique until five years versus the one, not major difference, but later on the curve uh, diverge and the single, single stand technique is better than the double. So it seems that uh, we can think one year, we can think three years, we can think five years, but we have also to think 10 years in terms of all cause mortality. I was puzzled that that diversion was so clear on the kaplan meyer curve. So yes, many, many factors still have to be understood here. Yeah? Trick, I think this comment is, uh, is very important because we, we uh, were anticipating that that long-term follow-up, the two, two, two stand technique will uh, have a a strong impact on the outcome. And uh, the idea that uh, the uh, mo mobilization between the two branches with maybe some stent uh, which were uh, breaked, broken uh, can, uh, can play a very important role. So I think it's uh, this dynamic approach of the bifurcation is very important. That's one point. And, and the second point, when you don't cage the vessel, you still have the option of the pharma treatment, you know? you take statin for 10 years of PCSK9, <laughs> you can modify this plaque. So I think we, ju we should be somewhat minimalist if possible, because the pharma drugs are becoming very, very we can powerful. Go to the next you know, uh, presentation, the uh, which yeah. is uh, by Dr. Uh, Opolsky, uh, Kornai CTA for guidance of bifurcation PCI. Chairman. Thank you for the kind invitation to present at the European Bifurcation Club 2021 meeting. My name is Max Opolsky, and the title of my presentation is Coronary CT for Guidance of Bifurcation PCI. By the way of background, let me state that coronary CT outplays invasive cuff for display of coronary plaque regarding both its localization and characteristics, and it performs equally well for assessment of medinal classification, bifurcation angle, and complications of PCI. So maybe we are barking up the wrong tree, and that is the angiogram tree. 
So what data do we have to justify the uptake of coronary CT for guiding bifurcation PCI? Well, the concept of CT-guided PCI for planning bifurcation intervention was first explored in our center in a prospective randomized clinical trial, which randomized 93 patients with bifurcation lesions to either angiography or CT-guided PCI. Interestingly, the CT-guided approach resulted in lower number of implanted stents, both in the main vessel and the side branch, as well as the higher frequency of non-compliant balloon post-dilatation. Importantly, one of the potential explanations for this observation is that coronary CT, in contrast to the invasive cuff, has the intrinsic ability to show the exact distribution of residual plaque so that you're more prone to cover it with a single longer stand. Number two, coronary CT can be used to predict side branch occlusion in provisional standing approach as confirmed by our study group on the largest up to now CT registry, including 363 patients with altogether 400 bifurcation lesions. Indeed, both the quantitative and visually assessed CT-derived resolve scores, as well as the presence of non-calcified plaque in the side branch, and finally Medina class with any proximal main vessel and side branch involvement, as assessed by cardiac CT, have the ability to predict side branch occlusion after main vessel standing. And here you can see an example of LAD diagonal branch bifurcation lesion in coronary CT that clearly displays plaque characteristics as well as the bifurcation angle. Importantly, the total CT-derived resolve score was remarkably high, summing up the distribution of plaque at the side of the side branch, the stenosis of both the main vessel and the side branch, as well as the high main vessel to side branch diameter ratio. In addition, we could also see a non-calcified low attenuation plaque at the side branch ostium, resulting in side branch occlusion after main vessel standing, despite the presence of a safety wire in the diagonal branch. Number three. There is a gargantuan number of studies suggesting a direct relationship between low attenuation plaque, positive remodeling, and spotty calcification, and periprocedural MI defined by troponin rise or no re reflow phenomenon during PCI. Here you can appreciate this ugly looking low attenuation plaque with positive remodeling and spotty calcium that was actually referred for PCI. However, after stent implantation, the no reflow phenomenon was observed and subsequent troponin rise was reported. Last but not least, coronary CT can be brought directly to the calf lab to assist in resolving proximal cap ambiguity in CTO intervention. Here we can see a complex CT, CTO LAD flash occlusion in a post cabbage patient that couldn't be resolved and solved out by coronary angio despite dual catheter injection. Remarkably, the guide wire kept going to the septal branch or the subintimal space of the intermediate branch, which was actually easily detected with CT co-registration and ultimately put into the right course of a lady, resulting in a good final result. Ultimately, we have the new kit on the block, the so-called CT perfusion, that allows to assess ischemia based on a simple dynamic scan protocol using adenosine or regadenosine. Here you can appreciate complete resolution of ischemia on dynamic CT perfusion after successful recanalization of occluded RCA using integrate wiring approach without loss of any significant side branch. Now, that's a different story though. Of successful CTO RCA recanalization, but using the reverse car technique, where most of the RV branches were lost 
corresponding to residual perfusion defect in the mid inferior wall on follow up CT perfusion. In conclusion, coronary CT exceeds invasive angio in identification and characterization of coronary plaque in bifurcation lesions. Coronary CT can predict the risk of side branch occlusion and the risk of PCI-related MI in bifurcation lesions. Last but not least, coronary CT registration resolves proximal cap ambiguity in osteobifurcation CTO lesions. Finally, we have the new kit on the block, the so-called CT perfusion, that may aid in estimating the area at risk for side branch occlusion in coronary bifurcation intervention. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, approach to, to predict what we should do during the procedure is very interesting. And I'm sure that uh, Patrick will uh, comment about that. I mean, all the point made by the, the speaker, I mean, uh, very clear. And uh, I, I think that uh, his vision is shared by many people. Uh, maybe two uh, caveat. Uh, number one is that I agree that what, what is very important is that with the multi-slice CT scan, you can really anticipate the angulation of the bifurcation without, without overlap and with minimal foreshortening. That's the three things you want to have. A wide angle, no too much shortening, and uh, uh, that, that's very critical and no overlap. When you are in that projection, you can work more easily. That, that's the optimal projection. But also what is important is all the QFR from angiography start to work. And you know, there are major progress on QFR with fractal flow, yeah? So Dr. Tu in Shanghai is, is coming now with a nice micro QFR, which is integrating the diameter of all the bifurcation. And, and it became so, yeah, quite reasonable. We are currently testing that versus I5FR. The other comment is that uh, we have spent a lot of time, and, and I'm pleased that uh, he's talking about uh, low attenuation. We have spent a lot of time about the optimal multi slice CT scan. You know, you have to take care of the body mass index, and you have to make the right combination between the contrast and the physiological uh, fluid that you are going to give, because it's very important when when the contrast came in the lumen, then suddenly the attenuation of the Onsfield unit of the plaque change. What is minus 30 can become suddenly 70 because there is a lot of contrast. So the acquisition is, is very important, but I think his talk is great and uh, all the point that it makes is very important. And of course, when you need something like uh, uh, a ring down or something like that, uh, sign ring, I mean, you know that you have to be very careful, yeah. Dr. Ku, do we have a, a comment? Yes, I think it's it's great that the Dr. Opovsky actually, you know, summarized the, you know, how the plaque characteristics and anatomy and geometry can, you know, be used in the prediction of side branch occlusion and the procedure risk. But the, it's interesting to see his, uh, his last conclusion that the perfusion CT scan for the estimation of myocardial mass at risk so that the, I understand that if there is a significant stenosis, perfusion scan can be helpful. But the, I'm asking to uh, Dr. Oposky that is there any way that the, when you do a perfusion, even there is a no stenosis because that the, we can occlude the side branch without pre you know, ischemia or the pre-intervention significant stenosis. So that the, is there any way that the CT scan can predict, no, not the simple CT scan, but perfusion CT scan can be helpful in prediction with the estimating massive risk with only by perfusion? It's a, it's a, it's a very good comment. Uh, so first of all, we have to think about CT perfusion as a new tool that we actually have in our armamentarium. Uh, so there is still very few data about that. We're lucky enough to, to launch quite a big uh, 
a scientific program with CT perfusion and CTL PCI in my center. Uh, you might, you know, there is until now there is no good way to to define a significant side branch during your CTO or PCI inter during your PCI bifurcation. We all do know that we have this European bifurcation consensus, which says that a significant side branch is the side branch we don't want really to lose based on the global context of the patient. Now the question arises how to define a significant, significant side branch based on CT perfusion. And you might do it in many ways. You might look at the, uh, at the perfusion defect related to the side branch, and you might define that by the number of segments, which are ischemic, based on quantitative or uh, relative perfusion index, like myocardial blood flow, which you can actually calculate based on, based on CT perfusion. The other way out is to, is to take the uh, quantitative value instead of the number of segments which are ischemic, like a you know, quantitative value, absolute value of the myocardial blood flow pertaining to the particular side branch. Uh, and finally, we have the other ways looking at that, and that might be FFRCT, which is something uh, different than CT perfusion. But the main thing is that sometimes there might be many caveats, like, you know, we might do bifurcation PCI, we might occlude the side branch, which is small. Uh, there is no significant perfusion defect on CT perfusion. The FFR CT is negative, or you know, even the uh, invasive FFR is negative. And the patient suffers pain. Uh, he has a troponin rise, uh, and he has to go to the intensive cardiac unit. So there is not, no good way how to resolve that. And that, that's why I think we do have this this very good definition based on your Euro bifurcation club, which you, you can actually see in the, and go through the European bifurcation club consensus. So uh, many ways to, to define that, but actually we come up to the same conclusion that there is no great uh, tool to, to assess that. Just a short commentary. Uh, we, we have to say to the audience that uh, CT perfusion, that's of course two scan with the hyperemic agent in between, and you jump immediately from 1.4, 1.5 millisievert to 7 millisievert just uh, to do the two scan. But I think it's, a, it's an important tool. And maybe after the last talk, I, I will mention. Uh, a uh, new development in that field, uh, basically orchestrated by uh, heart flow, which I think is a, is a very important uh, development. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's a nice uh, introduction to the next talk uh, by Dr. Uh, Choi, uh, which will talk about uh, the side branch relevance uh, according to uh, MSCT uh, evaluation pre procedural. So, dear chairman. Thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC 2021 meeting. The title of my presentation is Biocardial CT Segmentation to Define a Relevant Site Branch, a Source for the Progress. I have nothing to disclose. There may be two major issues in bifurcation PCI. The first is, is it worth to treat site branch? Second topic is, how to predict and treat shared signed branch before PCI, not during or after ballooning. Pressure of micro mass, the amount of myocardium subtended by the vessel, and CT Batkin score may answer each question. Why coronary artery such size and branches in such pattern? Not a few but large vessels, no many small vessels, but hierarchical large and small vessels. Because hierarchical branch network is the most energy efficient system, life is sustained by transporting and distributing materials. So the performance of network is essential for life and is maximized by minimizing the energy and space of network. Eventually, the human vascular system network follows the form of hierarchical branch network. 
two mathematical principles that has been used extensively in life science can be applied to calculate vessel specific amount of myocardium. The first is boron tessellation, so based on geometry, and the second is allometric strict scaling law based on the logarithmic correlations in life science. The theoretical coefficients of allometric scaling law has been studied extensively in these studies. And we have shown that these theoretical coefficients match very well with the real coefficients of allometric scaling in human heart. We investigated the amount of myocardial mass subtended by main vessels and side branches from almost 3,000 bifurcations. As shown in this figure, in poor bifurcation analysis, major vessel supplies 1.5 to 9 fold larger myocardial mass compared with side branches. Therefore, except left main, only one out of every five known left main bifurcations, the side branch supplies significant amount of myocardium defined by FMM or the amount of myocardial mass of more than 10%. For precise calculation of FMM, we need CT, but from angiography, we can reasonably estimate the amount of myocardium subtended by the side branch. If the length is more than 73 mm, then we suggest that the side branch has some significant role. FM also explains why there is a mismatch of anatomy and physiology between main branch and side branch. Hence, the side branch always has a smaller myocardial mass. The frequency of myocardial ischemia is lower and the FFR is higher in side branch. So, CT can predict major issues in biofilm fissure, such as clinical significance of side branch, or the risk of side branch occlusion even before procedure. So I'd like to suggest bifurcation fissure strategy based on CT. The first situation is when both the myocardial mass of main vessel and side branch are large, such as left main bifurcation, please treat both branch with respect because both vessels supply a large amount of myocardium. Technical strategy is, is usually focused on the treatment of side branch osteal plug, such as two change technique including decay crush, culotte, or a tap. Situation 2. If the myocardial mass of main vessels is much larger than the mass of side branch, mostly LED diagonal bifurcation, please focus on the main vessel treatment and be conservative to side branch treatment because main vessel is much larger than side branch. Technically, one standard structure with or without side branch treatment would be preferred. Situation 3. If both the myocardial mass of main vessels and side branch are similar but both are small, most circumference OM or PDA period bifurcations. Both main vessels and side branch may be equally important. So please treat wisely both vessels. Side branch might need aggressive treatment, otherwise, PCI may save just a half of the target myocardium. And consider the whole amount of main vessel and side branch myocardium. If both are so small, fissure itself may have very limited clinical benefit. If CT Bavian score is 0 or 1, the risk of side branch occlusion is not so high, so you can use high branch guiding catheter and there will be no need of side branch wiring. If CT Bavian score is 2 or higher, you may need Six branch guiding catheter and may also need provisional side branch wiring, even if the side branch is, is not so stenotic. Take home message from CT bypass studies are shown here. Side branch supplies smaller myocardial mass and show less physiological severity despite similar severity of stenosis, especially LAD diagonal bifurcation. Side branch with length of more than 73 mm millimeter means significant amount of myocardium, so please respect it. Side branch jailing can be predicted by assessing ugly or large amount of bifurcation plug replaced by CT bifurcation score. Thank you for your attention. So, Dr. Ku, uh, you, you work a lot in this field of uh, side branch relevance, so what is your opinion? 
So I think, you know, we are learning a lot from the, you know, CT specialist or the, you know, interventional cardiologists who are interested in CT. So that especially, you know, first, you know, when Dr. Choi developed and presented results in using FMM to estimate the side branch territory so that the viewer are very surprised to see that the most of branches could not supply more than 10%. In some, from some aspect, it seems natural. And the, we also know that the, there are many other methodologies to define myocardial mass cell risk using CT scans such as MR or the CAM score so that the, it's good that we are developing more and more advanced technologies. And I know that Patrick will discuss about the, you know, heart flow's new technologies. But one thing I'm a little bit concerned about using CT scan is that the, the lesions we are dealing with, especially the lesions which require two stenting, generally has a diffuse lung disease, which cannot be defined by CT scan very well. So for example, you know, Dr. Choi elegantly suggested that the side branch length, 73 millimeter, can be a cutoff to define the percent FMM, 10%. But the, when we have a significant diffuse lesion side branches, generally it cannot be traced by the CT scan due to its just narrowed calib caliber due to the small perfusion. So that the, we also have to understand that the CT has also several limitation. So for normal coronary, it's fine. But the, for the very diffuse disease, which require two stenting, uh, we should understand that there are lots of limitations. So we just uh, use uh, that kind of concept into our daily practice and to apply in our daily practice with the angiogram alone with the CT information. So that's my comment. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. I think it's very important to, uh, to point out the fact that there is a side branch relevance. It's just that you want to have a branch which is not leave untreated because the patient will have ischemia at long term. And there is a side branch which is not relevant but you don't want to lose it during the procedure because you, you will have a small acute MI, which is not good for the patient. So, so that's why I think it's very important to have this information of the risk of side branch occlusion and this information about uh, the risk of leaving ischemia more than 10% at follow-up. And it's not easy. So I think we'll continue to learn for many years, uh, thanks to you, to you all, uh, how to, uh, to solve these uh, two issues. Patrick, you have some... No, I, I think that the initial cartoon is exactly what you have said, the, the initial cartoon of Shoy. I mean, you don't want to lose something because that will be pain during the procedure and enzyme and so. And on the other hand, you don't want to attempt something who does not deserve to, to be attempted. I yeah. think that uh, I have three comments. I mean, uh, in Galway, we try to use that rule of 73 millimeter. You know, the practitioner likes something binary. You, you measure, you do, you don't do. I, I think it's, it's pleasant. It's a little bit simplistic, but uh, okay. It was at least one contribution to the pragmatism of the interventional cardiologist. The second point is that we're still thinking about stenose and mass of myocardium behind, we have not yet introduced the uh, myocardial resistance, you know, the microcirculation problem. You may have that too. You may have a diabetic, for instance, with a wonderful side branch and stenose, but if you look at the microcirculation, you will not improve anything. So I think it will come in the, in the bifurcation club. The, the other point is that when you have something who maybe does not deserve to be treated at least by a stent, we can go to the drug coating balloon. That's also a nice uh, alternative. And then finally, uh, I'm very excited about the paper that I read uh, recently in the Annal of Biomedical Engineering, which is coming from the group of Artflow. Uh, the first author is Papanolis, the second author is uh, 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 Taylor, and then uh, Vignon Clemenciel. And it's amazing is that they start to, to use uh, the multi-slide CT scan to quantifying the absolute myocardial flow and then also the resistance. So I think that probably we will see that at some point you will have 
the FFRCT plus the IMR. And then uh, you can have a more, the, it's a very exciting time, Jerry. It's a very exciting time. And it's so pleasant to see that all these quote unquote science is coming in the pragmatic field of the bifurcation. I think we have to give you the whole credit to have created this, uh, this wonderful forum. And if I've been there all the time is because there is this combination of uh, pragmatism and science. That's the best of the ABC. Thank you, Patrick. I think it's a good uh, uh, conclusion of this session. Uh, so very nice to have uh, you on board, of course, Dr. Ku, and all these uh, very important lectures about uh, MSCT and bifurcation. Very good. Have a good time.